All right, what is going on, everyone? And welcome back to more Black Desert. My name is John, and today we're going to be doing part two of our mini series where we're going to be talking about goal setting. Now, in the other video that I made, we talked about five different mistakes that MMO or BDO players make to burn themselves out really quickly. So I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in checking the previous episode, which is like how people burn themselves out of this game really quickly. But anyway, here are some tips that I did throughout the seven years of playing this game and some simple goal setting for you guys to do as well. And as you guys know, this game is a little bit different in terms of gear progression. Ideally, in traditional MMOs, you would just get to the max level, do the highest raids or hardest raids, get the best gear, and then usually with expansions, you know how in like World of Warcraft, for example, let's take that one because I know it. Whenever a new expansion comes out, your item level or your gear gets kind of like diminished and irrelevant because the new tier of raids come out and this makes your gear worthless, more or less. In BDO, every time they come out with a new region or an expansion, your gear is still relevant. So everything you have, you feel like you've earned it. And I wanted to talk about five things I wrote. I'm actually looking at like a little sticky note of bullet points. Five things I want to talk to you guys about in no particular order is one, picking the class you enjoy. Now, as you guys know, BDO has 26 classes and whether you think that's a lot or good or bad, I don't know. I think variety is always good. However, when there's this time where maybe there are too many classes in the game because it's actually hard to balance all of them. And obviously I think that Every class should be unique in one way or the other, but at some point, there's just too many classes, and BDO sorta is getting to that point if they keep adding more of them. And so, one thing that we talked about in the other video was people who do meta chasing and just playing the flavor of the month class. Now, one thing to set a goal on is just playing a class you enjoy, whether it's like a one or two of them, that's fine. If you enjoy meta chasing, I don't think that anything is wrong with that, but that just slows your progression down in a way because let's say um, you like one class and then you have to tag another one by doing this tag thing. Basically what you do is you copy your gear from your main to a tag class and that costs silver or well, you buy these like bottle items and uh, it costs like billions of silver. So it may not be a lot for like end game players. It's just my, maybe a few hours of grinding, but I guess for a new player, it's not going to be as expensive. It, the way tagging works is um, the gear, the cost is based on the amount of gear you have. So I don't know if I can actually, let me just see. Um, I don't know if I could do it while processing, but anyway, depending on the gear you have. So like if you have 10 black stars, it's going to be more expensive than if you had 10 black stars or something. So one thing that I really do mention is play something you like, whether it's one or two classes and stick to it, because a lot of the things you're going to be doing in this game are on your main and you're going to be sinking thousands, if not tens of thousands of hours, just grinding and or doing some things you like repetitively. And so you should probably just do it on the character you like. And number two is setting realistic goals. Now, Here's how I did it, and here's how some people look at it. As you guys know, let's say you are fresh off the season servers and your gear looks something like this, right? Now, you're probably thinking, okay, so I want to get to endgame fast, and I don't know how to do it, so we're just going to follow some build guide. What I would recommend to people is working on one piece of gear at a time instead of, like, everything all at once. That way at end game it gets a lot more time consuming and expensive every time you do it so working on one piece at a time instead of like rouletting your gear it's not a good idea we'll talk about that later and why it's not a good thing so how you get to your goal of progression in terms of whatever goal you're setting so let's say your goal is to get from i don't know pen boss gear to your first fallen god armor right now, 
ways you could set your goals are, hey, I'm working on one piece of gear at a time. What do I like to do, whether it's gathering or grinding? I'm going to save up this amount of silver and just buy it or plan on enhancing it yourself. And then we'll talk about more of enhancing later and, and the whole like no roulettes thing. But ultimately, when you set goals, I would work on one piece of gear at a time, no matter what it is, just because later on, it gets very time consuming and expensive just to do one different item. So just make sure to not overwhelm yourself by doing everything all at once. And some people do that and then they just get very overloaded. Just be like, okay, so you're fresh out of seasons. You have full tet boss gear and you're like, okay, I got to get them all to pen. Just work out on that one at a time and then you'll get there. It's not really a big deal. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh planning and practice so whether you are a pve -er, or pvp -er, or life skiller don't be afraid to take risks and try different spots so as you guys know in video there's a lot of different things whether you like grinding there's all these different grind spots i have videos of that by the way if you're interested in checking that out um i talk about pretty much every spot and give you my recommendations on is it worth it for silver xp uh agris and whatnot so you guys may have seen that on the channel and um yeah there's a lot of things you should know so when you read a guide or something and you're in your grind spot let's say you're trying to grind insert spot here usually most grind spots have multiple rotations and when i say rotations i mean like uh let's say think of like three circles or a venn diagram or something right so usually there is a best in spot and best in slot spot but sometimes you could just grind the other rotation and it's just as good but when you look up a guide or something usually people just recommend one spot and don't be afraid to try something else just because one the main spot that people recommend usually are very contested and that means you're going to be dueling for spot if you like that that's cool if you don't use your marnie realm thingy hour every day and or just uh, find another spot. Usually it's not that bad. And if you are a PvPer, there's a lot of things you can do. There's one thing that people don't really do. And all they think of when they think of PvP is just open world. So in this game, they have things like Arena of Solaire, uh, Red Battlefield, Battle Arena, and Node Wars, Sieges, and everything. So there's different kinds of uh, PvP whether it's gear capped, ungear capped, and just practice in an arena. And there's a lot of things you can try throughout the game. So I would definitely recommend just practicing makes perfect. And usually, I will say this as a truth that if you fight someone who knows what they're doing, and even if their class isn't like a meta class, uh, some people are actually really good at it, even if the class is just okay. I think those people are a lot better than people who just re-roll to the meta and just have no idea what they're doing. So just knowing all the classes and just practicing overall, whether if you're a PvP or I think that's very good. So all of that, planning your goals, practicing, and knowing how to build your character. So there's a lot of ways to actually build in this game, whether you like playing a defensive build, straight glass cannon offensive, or a support. Now, I will say that admittedly in this game, pretty much every class is kind of a DPS, but there are some classes that are tankier than the others, some that provide a few more support buffs or abilities than the others. Some are more like a assassin type classes. And uh, yeah, so I think every class is a different role, but just know what you do and don't necessarily um take every piece of advice you see as like fact i would just experiment with a lot of things and see what works for you and so and then practice with it the next thing i want to talk about is learning the central market because this is not really just a black desert thing it's just every game with a market system in it in general so understanding the market will allow you to get a better idea of what your next upgrade will be at the cheapest point. And so I've actually gotten so many questions of this in total uh, throughout the years 
of me doing YouTube is like, hey, how should I go about progressing my gear? And admittedly, it is pretty difficult as a new player and you just don't know. But things you could look at in the central market are, let's say, when I talked about doing one piece of gear at a time, right? So pick the item that gives you the most stats for the least amount of silver. That's just a general rule of how I go about uh, building and doing that. So I've used this example many times of when you're going for accessories or like things to progress uh, in terms of gear. So I'll show you this once again. Like for example, Tet to Pen is 17 to 20 AP. That's plus three for your upgrade, right? And the goal is not to spend as much money. So this one is 55 billion and the Bassy belt is 17 to 20. So basically essentially the same stats, right? The difference is this one is like 45 billion. So you see how there is a difference in um, you get the same stats for 10 billion silver less. Uh, just make sure to learn things like that. And when it comes to gear in terms of like armors and stuff that are a little bit more straightforward. So what I would recommend to people if you're looking at weapons, whether you play Succession or Awakening, I would usually recommend people going with the main hand first because that gives the most amount of accuracy. And especially if you are a PvPer, um, accuracy is very important. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a black star, but let's say you are fresh out of seasons and you're like, okay, so I have a Zarka and a Dandelion. I still don't, I still think those are good in general. So let's just take one of these, for example. A Zarka at pen has 200 accuracy. And even though that's not the same as Blackstar, well, like you can Capris it up to Capris 20 at pen, and it's basically the equivalent of a pen Blackstar. But the difference is um, you get more grind or monster damage AP with the black star. So that's just more end game stuff. Anyway, so main hand is always the most important just because it gives accuracy. And what people don't know, because this game has a lot of dumb hidden stats that I wish wasn't hidden. And I wish they were just were more transparent. And that's one thing we have to test because you know how in other MMOs you have like a parse meter or damage numbers like when you're attacking a target dummy you can literally see your dps and in this game it doesn't show you that whether you think that's a good thing or not so it's harder to find if let's say something is broken or not and yeah so let's look at a dandelion for example because this is what new players to mid-tier players will probably have and look how it doesn't give you any accuracy well, my, the Black Star does. If you get it to Capris, uh, I think, is it Capris 4 and then 8 and then like 20 or something? It gives you accuracy over time as you uh, progress through everything. And so it's a little bit more tricky because the main hand gives 200, whereas your Awakening gives you basically 0 until it's Capris. And that means that it's a little bit worse in terms of PvP and so some things people may not know, especially if you're a new player, is if you look at your stats for your offhand or not offhand, but like awakening, a few percentage of the awakening gets transferred to your main hand as hidden AP. It's kind of dumb how it does it, but like you can look at brackets and it gets like more more awakening AP, less accuracy. If I were a Pearl Abyss, what would I do? I would take this 200 accuracy and divide that a little bit into the uh, awakening because that will allow people to have more variety in terms of like, what do you want to do? And so it wouldn't be as like, here, this is what you should do first and here's what you should do second. So I've had a lot of questions of people asking, should I get an awakening weapon first because it gives more AP, but you get no accuracy off of it? That's why I think it should be balanced. That way people can get them in whatever order they want. Well, I mean, you can do that now, but it's just, it feels better if you get the main hand first. And it doesn't have to be black star. It could just be boss gear. This is just a general statement. And um, yeah, so learning the market as well as when it comes to gear progression, I think one thing you should look at in particular, it doesn't matter if you're on console 
you're a PC player or if whatever server you're on, whether it's like North America, EU and everything. So just look at it in terms of gear progression. So like, for example, a Tet, I think actually all the armors are more or less the same. For example, like 2.1 bill for a Tet Griffin. But if you were to get this one, it's like 2.7, right? So it is a little bit different in terms of armor stats. But at the end of the day, your ultimate goal is to transfer or convert them all to Fallen God, Labreska, and the Dawn Gloves. So just make sure to buy whatever is the cheapest or most stats you can at the time. And so that's what learning the market and just browsing everything to see what's the cheapest in general is all about. The next thing, and I think the final thing that we want to talk about is making smart decisions with gear and enhancing. So as you guys know, enhancing is very hit or miss, and most people will probably lose money by doing it, myself included, but I do it for the content on YouTube and make videos. But number one. When it comes to gear progression, the safest route is just buying your gear and don't enhance at all. But for people who like the thrill, let me show you exactly what you get by enhancing your gear yourself. You get your name on the piece of gear. If you look at the blue text, it's like equipment created by the great adventure and then your name. If that's worth a lot to you, that's awesome. If it's not, just buy your gear. And um, so... I remember many years ago, I mean, I still do this now, but one thing that I have ne never done after the second time many years ago is gear rouletting. And I do that in season, but that's a little bit different because I don't care about season gear as much. And what that is, and if you've ever watched other people, is when you get all your gear to like Tet, for example, and your goal is to get your first piece of pen or just any piece of pen gear, and then you just slam all your Tet gear in hopes that one of them goes so in best case scenario you get it on your first try and then you have made total gains and your stats go up worst case scenario is everything downgrades you don't get a pen and now all your gear is at like pry with no durability trust me when i say that going down in gear score in this game it feels really bad just because like you know how in traditional mmos you you raid for your gear and then you just get it by a drop or something. And it's like, oh, I didn't get it today. I guess we'll just raid again tomorrow. In this game, it's like you have to grind for your stuff, whether it's life skilling or grinding circles. And you know how, like, let's say you got to 280 AP, right? And you just, you're excited. You got to try a new grind spot and then you just blew up all your gear. Now it's at pry. You're at like 210 AP now or whatever it is. Suddenly, that just feels bad. You have to go back to a lower end grind spot. So one thing I would be careful of is croning your gear. And I don't think it's bad to cron. I just think there are things that are worth croning and things that are not worth croning. So it's like, just kind of be careful of what you're using it on. Because later on, when you're going for like high end gear, it's going to be more valuable because crons are harder to get by, I guess it also depends on the server you play. And just overall, don't roulette your gear. And that goes back to the point that I made earlier of enhancing one piece at a time. So instead of going from full tet to full pry because you blew up all your gear, just work on all the, or one piece of gear at a time. So at very worst, um, you only have one pry piece while your others are still there and your gear score doesn't just drastically drop and i used to give this advice to people and i don't really know how much value it has now is try to save up enough materials to get your gear to where it was before so let's say you're at tet right and your goal is to get pen try to make sure to save up enough materials to at least get it to tet at the end and once you see that you're running low on materials, uh, just stop enhancing for today. Like, yeah, it may feel bad. You, you're just like, okay, one more click and I got it. This time for sure. Usually that doesn't work. And usually you just try to get back to where you are, save up again, and then do it again. Um, nowadays, I think that 
probably just buying your gear is the way to go. But if you feel like you're, you really want that name on your piece of gear, then either use a backup piece or just try to get to where you were before. And those are the five tips that I could give you guys. One, picking a class that you enjoy because you'll be spending tens of thousands of hours on it. Um, set realistic goals and don't expect yourself to get like 700 gear score overnight. Um, it is what it is. You just have to slow progress through this game. And that's why it really does feel like whenever you get gear in this game, any upgrades actually feel good instead of just being like, oh, I got this rare drop. And then, I mean, that feels good too, but it's just when you get your first pen accessory, I can assure you that you will be more excited than if you were to just get a rare drop in like World of Warcraft and you're like, yeah, I got it. But then cool, we're just ready to get another day and get another piece, whatever. Whereas this game takes you weeks, if not months, to get your next upgrade. Planning and practice, we talked about of just learning the central market, uh, practicing whether you're a PvP or trying to grind spots, and just find things that work for you. And then topic four was learning the central market, buying the cheapest item for the same amount of stats and or most amount of stats for the least amount of money is pretty important. So at the end of the day, hopefully you guys are progressing in an efficient way and not just buying dumb things in some random order just because some guide told you to. So do a little bit of research in terms of your gear and seeing like, hmm, okay, so let me give you a general idea. It may vary on based on servers. So in terms of priority gear upgrades, here what, here's what I would do. Chest armor first, because that one has that one has been out the longest. So if you're buying it, it'll generally be the cheapest. And then if you are trying to grind the feathers and stuff or the ember, flame, whatever it's called, uh, there's probably more of them on the market and or cheapest. So chest piece armor followed by helmet piece and then gloves and then shoes. Um, weapons go by main hand, uh, awakening, and then offhand. And then accessories go from probably belt to necklace and then rings. And then the earrings will always be at last. And that's actually the order for accessories, in my opinion. Also depends on what you're getting, but that's generally the order that I would upgrade my gear in. So with that said, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know my videos are a little bit longer than like, you know, your average guide, but I like to try to explain why I do things instead of just being like, okay, just do this and then not tell you why. So yeah, uh, I make videos for new players, returning players, and people who are just looking to get better at the game. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments or join the Discord. I'm happy to answer any questions there. And before we head out, I just want to let you guys know that I do have a code uh, for Acoin purchases and in-game packages. So if you are looking to try out the game for the first time and or upgrade your copy from like the base game to the Conquerors or Legendary, whatever it's called, uh, use my code John Law, and it's not case sensitive. So I get a small portion of whatever you spend or if you're buying pearls and whatever package you get, I get a small portion of that as well. I would really appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for all your support. That's all I wanted to talk about today. Hopefully you guys come back again tomorrow. We'll have more cool stuff to talk about. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.